Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Man, we are thrilled it's Monday. I'm, I'm happy it's Monday. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to see you here on Monday morning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where else would I rather be on a Monday? <laughs> Except plus, at work. Plus, there's a chance of rain on a Monday. Yeah. And not only that, we're one day closer to Friday. <laughs> True. Right? See how right, that works? Justin? True. So David, why you not need smile? to bring it down a little bit, okay? <laughs> Boom, it is man. Monday. <laughs> it's Monday. Uh, no. And, uh, Monday. Monday's always getting abused. Yeah. And, you know, so, mad at so, Monday. It's like, so what did Monday to, ever do? We're here it's to celebrate route. Monday. We yeah. are. And, and at least there is some rain on the radar. We, we like the rain. We want to see some rain. There's not a lot, but we do have some showers that are working through at this shower. Nothing that's very heavy. If you're watching from here in San Antonio, there's no rain right now. It's just mostly cloudy. But we do notice there are some showers up around Bernie, near Bandera. Seeing a few downpours here and there. These are not going to last very long. Not going to have a big effect on your day. Uh, so just know that it will be isolated today. And I think as the day wears on, we'll see similar showers to this. Light stuff, quick moving. And uh, we could see some wet roads here and there, but rain chances today are sitting in 30%. Let's take a look at the time lapse here. And you can see we've had a couple showers move through. A lot of cloud cover, and that really is going to be the theme this week. Clouds, a little bit of rain here and there, and some gusty winds. Uh, so you may want to tie down some of those Halloween inflatables. Keep that in mind. Winds can gust 20 to 25 here over the next couple days. 75 here in San Antonio right now. Seguin 72, Bernie 72, Kerrville also at 72. In our forecast today, cloudy with a few showers. We'll keep it at 30% really basically through the day. Uh, temperatures will only make their way up into the mid 80s. So all the cloud cover helps keep temperatures down a little bit. Then as we get into this evening, temperatures low 80s and then eventually drifting down into the 70s. Now there are a couple days this week where rain chances are a little bit better. We'll discuss that forecast for you coming up here in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Top stories this morning, a chase on foot. A San Antonio police officer running after a man with a gun. After that man is caught, the officer ends up shooting him. It happened around 2 this morning at an apartment complex near the intersection of South General McMullen and Roselawn. Police say a man at the apartments was showing a gun to someone, and that's when the officer ran after him, during which the officer initially used a taser on the man. Chief William McManus says there was then a struggle over the gun, and the officer stepped back and shot the man. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Today is the first day of early voting for November 7th election. 14 Texas constitutional amendments are on the ballot and so are a few local offices for a complete list of those amendments and how to find out what else you could be voting on. Just find the article on our website, ksat.com. And for now, let's look at today's nine at nine. The Biden administration is asking Israel to delay their expected ground incursion into Gaza in order to allow more time for the release of hostages and to get critical aid into the region. All this as Israel steps up the airstrikes. Meanwhile, the humanitarian crisis inside Gaza is growing. People are running out of food, water, medicine and fuel. And there are fears the conflict could widen. The U.S. now moving a second carrier strike group and missile defense system into that area. House Republicans are expected to hold the candidate forum tonight to find someone to succeed Representative Kevin McCarthy, who was ousted as House Speaker earlier this month. The House is basically at a standstill until a new speaker is confirmed. Some Republicans and some Democrats have suggested boosting interim speaker Patrick McHenry's power in order to break the impasse. But there is widespread opposition within the GOP conference to the idea. The ride on Wall Street getting bumpy. The most closely watched measure of nervousness among investors is the SIBO, Volatility Index. It has hit its highest level in nearly seven months. Worries about the Israel-Hamas war are piling on top of concerns about weaker than expected earnings reports from companies like Tesla and worries that interest rates will stay high for a while. Interest rates are one of the big reasons buying a home has become so much more expensive. With 30-year rates hitting 8%, an analysis from CBRE says the average new home payment is more than 50% higher than the average rent. That's the biggest spread since at least 1996. Food prices are starting to pull back a little. Promotions at stores are up to levels not seen since before the pandemic, but food costs are still about a third higher than 2019. The SAG after strike is now more than three months old. The union says it will hold its next round of negotiations with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers tomorrow. 
Two sides reportedly are at odds over a number of issues that include revenue sharing, salary, and the use of artificial intelligence. Tesla recalling thousands of its newer model vehicles due to a potential brake fluid safety issue. The recall affects the Model X vehicles from 2021 to 2023. The vehicle can fail to detect low brake fluid and will not display a warning light. Tesla has released a software update free of charge to correct the issue. Owners of the affected vehicles will be notified in the mail beginning December 12th. Toyota is the latest automaker to adopt the charging standard used by Tesla's superchargers. Toyota says certain vehicles will have the standard's charging ports in 2025. It gives customers access to more than 12,000 superchargers. The Texas showdown between the Astros and Rangers heading to Game 7 of the ALCS. Last night, the Rangers held off the Astros in Game 6 with a 9-2 win. Game 7 will be tonight, 7 o'clock in Houston. The winner heads to the World Series. And that's today's Nine at Nine. The Texas legislature is almost at the halfway point of its third special session this year. And on the agenda are school vouchers, border security and COVID-19 mandates. Avery Everett shows us how one bill is written to bar COVID-19 vaccine mandates for private employers. Right, it's a classic battle about individual rights. A bill that could ban COVID-19 vaccine mandates for private employers is moving through the state legislature in the third Texas special session. The consensus was that this wasn't something that was not finished. The state Senate passed Senate Bill 7 just a week ago, and it's now in the House. On Thursday, it was discussed in a public hearing. And those political science professors say this is far from the first attempt by Texas Republicans to ban these types of mandates. Just a couple of weeks ago, on September 1st, a law went into effect banning any governmental entities from requiring a mask or COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Now, weeks later, with a focus on the private sector, Texas Democrats say this is a safety concern. Some healthcare uh, industry uh, businesses have also been in opposition. Um, this comes as Metro Health reports that there have been a decrease in COVID-19 cases across San Antonio in the last few weeks. But with winter ahead, there are concerns COVID-19 numbers could bounce back. Political science professors saying this is just another reason the clock is ticking for this bill. I think they're hoping that that will end up being a little bit of the compromise. With half of the third special session still at play, this is still kind of a hot issue uh, for folks around the country as well. This bill still has a long journey before it could become a law. Today marks day 15 of this third special session here in Texas. Now, remember that in Texas, these special sessions can only last 30 days, meaning the clock is ticking to see what could happen to private employers and these COVID-19 vaccine mandates. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. It is almost time for the Dia de los Muertos festivals coming up this weekend. And our Sarah Costa shows us how the festival has become such an iconic event in Texas to honor our loved ones who have passed away. We started very small there. Uh, we had, I think, uh, 30 altars, about two stages, and uh, about 3,000 people for that first weekend. When Jim Mendiola and his partner first brought the Dia de los Muertos festival to San Antonio, it was a small celebration. 11 years later, it has grown into San Antonio's biggest Day of the Dead festival that takes over Hemisphere downtown. Now we're at 135,000 people over two days, and we're up to this year about 88 altars. The two-day free event is open to the public that celebrates tradition, art, and culture, with over 50 live performances on stage, a procession each day, and over 80 Day of the Dead altars. The altars are built by local artists and organizations celebrating their deceased loved ones. The way we do it, where we ask the community to create altars, it's very specific to San Antonio. So what happens is it's sort of a, a yearbook of what's happened the past year, either locally, nationally, and um, people respond to it. it it's, it's a universal response to sort of remember what's happened in the past your ancestors. Mendiola says everyone experiences grief, loss and remembrance, and it's seen in all these altars. However, coming together to remember our loved ones as a community helps us celebrate their lives and legacies. I think what people walk away with is um, a mutual celebration of life. So come celebrate Muertos Fest October 28th and 29th at Hemisphere 
And you can watch KSAT's broadcast of the event right here on KSAT 12 and all our streaming platforms on November 1st from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, if you're new to San Antonio or you've never participated in this event, this is this is something that's very special to this city, and very special to the culture of San Antonio. Yes, it is. It's very beautiful. And again, yeah. already this Saturday and Sunday coming up. 908, 75 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. We're going to have highlights from last night's ALCS Game 6 as the Rangers hold off the Astros to force the Game 7. We're going to have a look ahead to that game in the next half hour. But first... Good morning. If you want to explore the tropics of South Texas or maybe the desert and mountains of West Texas, this exhibit is for you. The importance behind it here at the Witte Museum coming up next. Welcome back 912. If you want to examine rarely seen natural history specimens and artwork, there's a brand new exhibit at the Witte Museum. You can explore Texas iconic habitats at the exhibit titled A State of Exploration. And our Tiffany Huertas joins us live with this this morning. Good morning, Tiffany. I see that I got there. <laughs> Ooh. How do we? <laughs> yes, good morning. We're exploring here. Take a look. There's so much to see over here. This is divided into eight parts across Texas. Different artifacts, different paintings. This morning we've had Abby here. Good morning, Abby. Good Tell morning. us about this exhibit. It's Absolutely. so cool and I interactive. Know. I know. It's such an incredible exhibit. So like you mentioned, this is the eight eco regions that we see here in Texas. I don't know if you guys know this, but Texas is the second most ecologically diverse state in the United States, which means we see so many different types of plants, animals, and landscapes here. And what's so cool about this exhibit in particular is that we see all of these specimens, including animal and plant, but all of this amazing artwork, all dedicated and kind of a love letter to our state here in Texas. And it's very interactive because we're seeing the paintings on the walls, but we're also seeing different writings as well. Absolutely. And this incredible exhibit also includes all of our eco regions with information about them, where we can find these animals and where these specimens have come from. This uh, exhibit also displays most of the Woody's collection. So most of these specimens that we see are part of our Woody collection here at the museum. Last time you were with us, you brought some spiders. <laughs> this time you brought spiders again. I, listen, I'm a spider girl. I love some creepy crawlers things for sure. Yes. Tell us about this item right here. I'm a little partial to this guy because this is something that I taxidermied for this exhibit in particular. So this is our Texas brown tarantula, so very similar to our other live tarantula that we spoke about last time. This is an animal that we can see here in Texas and this specimen in particular is something I'm incredibly proud of. Amazing. And one last thing we want to show you before we go. This area right here is perfect for the kids. Tell us about yes. this. So this is an incredible interactive space that we have some drawing area, including some colored pencils some pencils and some other fun tools for our students to sit and look at some of these specimens a little bit more in detail and be able to draw what they see. There's also some other fun interactives, including bird calls that we have in this space. So it's a really fun way to guess and to uh, test your knowledge of the birds that we see here in Texas. So really cool way to inspire your kiddos to go out into a natural space and take a look at the world around them. Perfect. And this is open until March. And I want to test David and Stephanie back at the station. Just oh. take a look at this. These are just some of the birds here. I'm going to play one of them. Tell me which one you think it oh. is. Take a listen. Okay. Well, the first part sounded like my husband. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I, uh, I can't. I, well, I, we we can't see. We're 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 older here, Tiffany. I thought we were going to just identify him. I guess. Yeah, I that she was telling cardinal. us to pick, pick a color. Yeah, the cardinal is a hummingbird. Well, David well, said, uh, yes, it's a northern cardinal. Look at you. Look at David. Wow, I didn't know you were a bird expert. Very good. David, this is perfect for you that you need to come over yeah, here and then teach out. the kids some stuff. You know, that's what's great about All right, Texas, guys, we'll send it back to you. Is it Thank such you. a huge state? Thanks, David. Mm -hmm. It's such a huge state. There's just yeah. so much to see, and it's so different in every region of Texas. It's true. Do you have a lot Most of cardinals? Don't have this. At I, your, there's a lot of cardinals flying around. Yeah, well, I mean, I are you live? like yeah. where you live? I guess. Yeah, wow. a lot of cardinals. I, I can just imagine David Sears <laughs> sitting out on a back porch. <laughs> In the rock and chair, <laughs> in the cardinals, <laughs> listening to the birds. 
I like it. That is impressive. That was impressive, actually. Yeah. Good <laughs> job, David. I like it. I like it. Well, you know, you're speaking of the regions of Texas. I feel like de the desert has sort of reclaimed San Antonio mm -hmm. is what it's feeling like, the, as dry as it's been. So we're happy to see some rain yeah. on the radar this morning. And we've got some showers working your way through uh, Bandera County up towards Kindle County into the Hill Country. These are fairly light, although where you see some of that red color, maybe a little heavier rain, but this is going to be so quick. That's the problem. These are very small and quick moving. So let's zoom in on some of this activity. If you're watching us from Bernie, you've had a couple showers pass through. You'll get another one here that's just about to cross I-10 into the city of Bernie. We've got one uh, moving north just to the west of Bernie. This will make its way up towards Comfort, likely here within the next 10 minutes or so. And then a few showers out towards Kerrville. As for San Antonio, not seeing a lot right now. We did see a few earlier, uh, but right now it's uh, pretty quiet. I think as the day wears on, you'll see a few more showers pop up. We could even see a thunderstorm, although not likely. Weather where you live, a lot of cloud cover this morning. You see a few drops here and there as we look at the time lapse. 75 in San Antonio right now, 74 in New Braunfels, 72 in Seguin, Bernie, and Kerrville. Pretty uniform numbers because the cloud cover is going to keep uh, temperatures in check today. 77 at 11 o'clock, 79 noontime, 85 at 4 o'clock. There is a 30% chance for rain throughout the day. Hard to pinpoint a specific time, so just have the umbrella with you most of the afternoon. And we do need to mention the winds out of the south anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour, but perhaps getting a little bit stronger tonight. So I mentioned off the top of the show, don't forget about those inflatables. Very popular right now for Halloween. Tie them down because they, they could blow away with these, these kind of winds. Forecast for today. Noontime. A couple showers here and there. I think the bulk of the heavy rain is going to be off to our north and west. N now, that's where we could see some heavier rainfall totals, uh, just not really across our area. And as uh, we go into the afternoon, you can see it's just kind of the spotty shower activity. This is around 4 o'clock today. And then going into this evening, same story, with most of the rain still focused out west. Uh, as we look at the big picture here with water vapor, now this is the remnants of Norma, by the way. This is why we're getting showers to good Pacific moisture in the atmosphere, and we can see it here on water vapor. So where you see this milky white color, that represents good moisture. This orange and yellow color, that's dry air. So that moist air is coming right over top of us in the upper parts of the atmosphere, and that is giving us uh, some of the rain you're seeing today. Austin got some good rain earlier. And then uh, you see some of the showers that are making their way up towards uh, Dallas at this hour, too. So our uh, future cast, as we look long term here, remnants of Norma start to move away. Then we'll watch an upper level low start to move in from the west. So this starts to kick off more rain. I think as it gets a little bit closer on Wednesday, our rain chances kind of go back up. Tomorrow they come down some. We're talking like 20 percent. But on Wednesday, they kick back up a little bit more as uh, this energy works in. And this is where we could see a couple of thunderstorms. Now, the flooding risk on Wednesday is I think we, we could get some heavier rain is still going to be off to our west and northwest. Really throughout the entire week, uh, that's where the best odds heavy rain will be. So I don't think we're going to get a ton of rain here in San Antonio, but you see the rain chances are there each and every day. 30 percent tomorrow. 40% Wednesday with uh, 86 for the high. That's probably our best odds getting some rain. And then just a 20% chance Thursday, 30% chance Friday. Still some small chances over the weekend. And I should mention as we look down the line towards Halloween, some indications we could be getting a front with some rain and some cooler weather. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just have to How we feel about with that? umbrellas. Maybe. Well, we'll see. It's too early to say if it's going to be rainy during trick-or-treat time, but we'll keep a close eye on it. All right, but the cooler weather would be nice. Yes. Thank you, By the way, your uh, chocolate doesn't melt. Oh, and yeah, that too. I was worried about that. <laughs> the you know, can't, like 97 the degrees, not want it to melt. And the Milky Ways and Kit Kats, you come back, it's like, eh. Right, the good, yeah, the good stuff. I'm telling you. Yeah, you can remind her there. Yeah, problem. What am I here for? <laughs> Thank 9, you, 20, 75 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Well, when money gets tight, you may be tempted to dip into your retirement account, but there are some things you should consider before doing that. We're going to explain after the break. Welcome back, 923. For many people, their biggest stash of savings is in their retirement plan. So when faced with a financial hardship, some choose to dip into that account. However, is that the best option? ABC's Arena Roy shares what you should consider before doing that. 
There are broadly two types of tax advantage retirement accounts available to American workers. An IRA is available to any working American with earned income. The other type of an account is an employer-sponsored account, and your employer has to offer it for you to be able to access it, and that's a 401k. Bank rate analyst James Royal says that for both IRA and 401k accounts, when you withdraw money earlier than age 59 and a half, the U.S. government imposes a 10% penalty. There are a number of hardships that allow you to take money out of an IRA and avoid the 10% bonus penalty. Uh, being flat broke, however, unfortunately, is not one of them. Qualifying hardships differ based on the type of retirement account you have, but you may be able to make a penalty-free withdrawal for medical bills if you're permanently disabled or have a terminal illness, if you're a victim of domestic abuse after a natural disaster for your first home purchase, for higher education expenses, for debts owed to the IRS, and for payments to the other spouse as part of a divorce. But even if you can avoid the 10% penalty, Royal says you can't avoid the taxes, and he suggests only tapping into your retirement account if it's a last resort. So you take that money out today, and that might be a relatively modest sum of money, but you're losing the compounding over time that it could become. So if you took out $5,000 today, that could easily be forty or $50,000 from your future self. Royal says there are some other options you can consider, like taking a loan from your 401k account or a bank or credit union, taking advantage of promotional credit card offers, and trying to get help from family and friends. The thing is, when you tap a retirement account early, the money comes out, but it really can't go back in. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And experts say to always consult with a financial advisor before making any major financial decisions. It is now 926 and it is still, it's been 75 degrees for like four or five hours now. Yeah, a long time. And, and budged. No, still humid also. Yep. <laughs> well, coming up on GMSA, what's at stake as House Republicans try to figure out who will be the new House Speaker? The issues that can't be resolved until a new representative is chosen. Plus some bad news for Longhorn fans and Quinn Rivers will tell you why coming up in just a few minutes has something to do with his shoulder. Mm. Welcome back. 29 minutes after 9 o'clock. House Republicans still on the hunt for a new Speaker of the House. We are expected to hold a candidate forum tonight and look for someone to succeed. Representative Kevin McCarthy, who was ousted earlier this month. CNN's John Lawrence tells us until a new Speaker is voted in, the House will stay at a standstill. 20 days and counting since Representative Kevin McCarthy was kicked out as Speaker of the House. This is embarrassing for the Republican Party. It's embarrassing for the nation. And we need to look at one another and solve the problem. Rep Jim Jordan of Ohio exited the race for Speaker Friday after three failed bids. Since then, numerous Republicans have thrown their hats into the political ring, including representatives Tom Emmer, Pete Sessions, Kevin Hearn, Jack Bergman, Austin Scott, Byron Donalds, Mike Johnson, Dan Muser, and Gary Palmer. Congress is a light like high school, but even more so. So um, hopefully we'll get past this. The House of Representatives is basically at a standstill until a new speaker is confirmed. That means no legislation can pass like policy bills and government funding bills. And if something isn't resolved by November 17th, the U.S. is going to go broke. This uh, deadline for government funding will be on top of us uh, before we know it. So it really would behoove the Republicans to <laughs> get a speaker this week and, and get in the game. Democrats in the House say teamwork between Republicans and Democrats is needed to get back on track. The only way to do it is to figure out how we can partner in a bipartisan fashion to reopen the House and govern in a reasonable, common sense way. I'm John Lawrence reporting. There have been discussions about boosting interim speaker Patrick McHenry's power in order to break the impasse, but there are some disagreements about that. Either way, any lawmaker that runs for House Speaker needs to get 217 votes to win the gavel. Live cam, clouds, humidity. Hopefully that translates into some rain. It has a little bit. I mean, we've seen a little bit this morning. There's been some wet roads here and there, but not a lot, not a lot. And the sunrise this morning, did you see it? I posted it to my Instagram. I went outside on the roof and took a shot, but this is another vantage. 
sent in to our KSAT Connect by Tracy. Ah, it was nice this morning. Very pink for a while uh, as the sun came up. So cool shot. We appreciate it. Uh, we've got a few more we can show you, and you can check those out on our website as well. Satellite and radar, along with temperatures here, so a lot to look at. But I wanted to show you that underneath some of that rain, it is cooler out near Rock Springs. 68 with some light rain there, Junction 71. We're looking at mostly cloudy skies here in San Antonio, 75. The sun actually may try to pop out around Kennedy and Victoria, but most of us are looking at mostly cloudy skies. And here locally around Bear County, mid 70s right now. A lot of cloud cover today, so that'll keep temperatures from uh, getting all that warm. We're talking mid 80s for highs. 30% chance of rain throughout the day. So these showers you see on the radar, they stick around and it'll be hit or miss type stuff. Nothing that's very heavy here in town. Although if you're up near Rock Springs or northwest portion of wherever we are, you could see a little bit more in the way of rainfall. 85, the forecast high, then down into the 70s tonight. Rain chances stick around tomorrow, and especially as we get into Wednesday. More on that forecast for you here in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. City Council members are taking steps to recognize the strip for its cultural significance by giving it a cultural heritage designation. So this area is from North Main Avenue to Evergreen Street, north of downtown. If the designation is approved by the City Council, it could funnel money to promote awareness of the area's history and significance. The designation could also guarantee protection from possible future demolition. Council members petitioned for the cultural heritage designation last week, but it still needs to be put in front of all the council members to vote on. And today, Edgewood ISD will be hosting another community meeting to discuss plans to close some campuses. The closures are not finalized, but the district's proposal names as many as 10 campuses. The next community meeting will be this evening at the Memorial High School Auditorium. This is from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. A committee will take public comments into consideration, then make recommendations for the school board to vote on in November. And the City of San Antonio's Home Rehabilitation Program is reopening today. That program helps with funding through a forgivable loan to low and moderate income households to help with home rehabilitation to address health, safety, or code issues. Applications will be accepted until November 20th. To read more about what the program covers, just look for this story on our website at kset.com. Oh, here, here we, we go. go. <laughs> this is what it's all about right here. ACS yeah. Championship Game 7. Mm -hmm. Two teams equally matched. They can both hit. Yeah. They can both field. They can both pitch. Mm -hmm. And they hate each other. All the above, yes. The Perfect. best two words in sports. Game 7, David, tonight. Oh, and man. get this. All the road teams have won every single game in this series. What is going on here? 3-3 three, three right now, series tight there. You saw the Rangers took care of business last night out there yeah. at Minute Maid Park. And uh, this was a key moment here for the Rangers closer there. Uh, Leclerc getting a big, big strike out there with the bases loaded in the eighth inning, David. Yeah, because then Garcia came up mm -hmm. with that grand and slap. Took care and of if business. you go back to the weekend, you remember they had the bench clear. I could, yep. You can't call it a brawl because no punches were thrown. Just a bench clearing <laughs> meeting at the at home plate. Mm -hmm. and he got a little crazy with uh, yep. when he hit that home run and threw the bat and upset. And of course, <laughs> this goes way back. I mean, yeah. these two teams do not like mm -hmm. each other, which mm -hmm. makes it such a great night for a game seven. That's it, it's all set up. I mean, they might as well just had game seven to start the series because, you know, this is this. Yeah, is yeah, this should be a lot of fun here. here it's going to be in Houston again. So the Astros won the division means they have the uh, the home field advantage and uh, Max Scherzer on the mound, David, yeah. for the Astros tonight. They, big uh, they, got, they, they got to him and first time he pitched in yep. game three, mm -hmm. man, they just they Knocked him all over the ballpark at three in the second inning, then another one in the third, another one in the fourth, and the Astros won that one. It was a road game, so, you know, mm -hmm. the road team always wins. And so then it's Christian <laughs> Javier for the Astros tonight. Yes. Remember yeah. last year in the World Series, he threw the shutout. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Then, yeah. yeah. So, all right. So maybe some good karma there for the Astros. Uh, I predicted the Rangers would win this series at well, the beginning of it. I got a little worried there after game six. But uh, actually, after a game five, but then now I, I feel like the Rangers are gonna are gonna take so. this series. I'm just just throwing it out there. They no hate. They're to on the, the road. And they swing the bats well on the road. So you know, yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. if the Astros can get one at home. Yeah, we need yeah. one now. Yeah. So game seven to tonight. Uh, there at Minute Maid Park. All right, David. Uh, no NFL. Our Cowboys were off. Texans were off. We had NFL games, but no, uh, yeah. none of our teams. So we are going to go straight to college right now. And uh, Ooh, UT on the road here. there. Steph is clapping. 
There's some bad news here. I think yeah. I'll just get right to the bad news. Okay. Well, the good news is they won. Yeah. They, they survived. Is, survived. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good way to put it. They were up 21 nothing. Yep. I know. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was flipping back and forth between three or four things. I look up, it's like 21 mm -hmm. 40. I, went, ah, I had to uh -huh. back it up and look and see yeah. what happened. I know. And then Quentin Ewers got just, mm -hmm. I, well, see that play here in just a second, but boy. Yeah. That yeah. defender and him, they clashed shoulders, and that was, man, <laughs> yeah. it hurt. I, I felt that one, and he's out for three yeah. to five weeks. So yep. what does that mean for the athlete? Well, I mean, I mean obviously, so Texas is still kind of in the mix here for the college football playoff. Of course, they mm -hmm. control their own destiny. But again, Quinn Ewers, you know what? I, I like the fact that he's willing to take on these defenders, but you have to protect yourself. He uh, obviously does not know the meaning of slide. I think no. that'd be a good thing no, if you'd slide every now and then. Yeah. Because they are in a championship race, and well, again, I appreciate the bravado of him going head to head with those defenders. I mean, come on, dude, <laughs> but protect yourself. Malik Murphy came in mm -hmm. as his replacement, not yeah. Arch Manning. Yeah, saw Arch getting ready on the sidelines yeah. there, but no Arch Manning. This one, we'll see if he gets yeah. some action uh, coming up this uh, week. But they it looks play. like Murphy's going to start. Yeah, and they yeah. have BYU comes to Austin yeah. this weekend, so that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. And. That's a that's good BYU of, team. Yeah, a solid of BYU team. Because Murphy decided to stay. He had a great mm -hmm. spring. Travis reading some stuff about him. He had a great spring training. He's getting yeah. a lot of calls from a lot of yeah. schools. He said, no, I want to stay here and go up against Maybe Ewers. Maybe because he knew Quinn Ewers was not going to slide. Yeah, man. He's going to get hurt and, uh, at some point. You know, he wanted, to, he wanted <laughs> yeah. the competition to see if he can get So now he's got his shot, looks like. So yeah, Texas see. did. I mean, uh, Texas did benefit by a uh, bad spot there by the refs on that last drive by Houston. Oh, why did you need to fix Look, I'm not, again, Texas got a little bit of love there from the refs. Now, Houston did get a chance to uh, oh, convert on that fourth down. Yeah, they, did. they did not. They did. So, okay. And then was off this weekend, so Justin's, Justin's okay today. He's not stressed out. <laughs> Okay. Take it down. He's good, yeah. <laughs> Tech went to Provo, Utah. And Oof, ouch. Wow. Yeah, that well, it's the same BYU team. Hey, they it's got the awesome. third-string quarterback, whatever. <laughs> well, he's a third-stringer. Well, but they got him on the roster man, for a reason. Man. You know, okay. you got to be able to throw the ball. Yeah. you got to be able to handle it. They fumbled like three times in the first. <laughs> all right, David. you got to be able to handle it. <laughs> okay, so here's some session. good news. Yeah, the, this is good this. news here. Um, all right, David, UTSA, remember, Coach Jeff Trailer said, you know what, just make sure, just wait till our guys get healthy till we get into conference play. What do you say? And uh, he's been true to his word because they are 3-0. They are yep. just steamrolling opponents right now. Yep. This big win here at Florida Atlantic over the weekend. That was a nice, nice mm -hmm. victory. And yeah. it's good to see if Frank Harris is healthy or mm -hmm. healthy as he's going to get. And, uh, man, that kick him flat out play. Yeah. All right, so they're 3-0 in conference, so that's mm -hmm. a good thing. All right, now let's yes. get to what's coming up Wednesday night. Here we go, yes. What we've all been waiting for, the start of this thing. <laughs> tired of the preseason, Man. tired of the summer league, and tired mm -hmm. of all that. Mm -hmm. Let's get after it, although Friday night was pretty good for yeah. Rimbanyama, wasn't it? That was. And, uh, you know, I saw a bunch of people buzzing across the NBA about this uh, performance. Victor Wimba, he had a block of a three-pointer, ran back down, got a dunk. I mean, he, he's just doing everything right now. And this is just a taste, David, of what I think uh, Spurs fans and the rest of the NBA should expect this season. And Zach Collins signed an extension for two years. Like, like Stephanie was all excited. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, love me some Zach Collins. Yes. Good Zach. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what I love about this. 35 million for two years. 30, wow. love, 35 million yeah. reasons for Congrats. him to love, yes. Yeah, so um, here, and, and David, what I like about Zach Collins is that he has taken on his role. Remember, he was a guy who was a lottery pick mm -hmm. a few years back, uh, just had to deal with a lot of injuries. Came with the Spurs on one of those like one year sort of deals. Yeah. Worked hard to get back healthy. And he's really kind of like a protector. He reminds me of those the Bruce Brothers. That you used to follow Way back in the day. Back yes, when? back in the day. Those types like of guys. Kobe Dietrich and those guys. There you guys. go, yes. <laughs> those wow, types you did of guys. Go. Let's go on that one. That's good <laughs> I stuff. I like that move. All right, so this is how popular the Spurs have become thanks mm -hmm. to Wimby. Mm -hmm. They play at 8 30 on Wednesday night to open up the season on ESPN. There so, we go. yeah, so all the national broadcasts now want the Spurs mm -hmm. on the air because <laughs> they've got the best player in the league, at least yep. the best young prospect. Player. Yes, the okay. uh, best I think young he's prospect. Be the best player in the league. league. Oh, for sure. sure. Yeah. LeBron is old, so this will be, <laughs> wow. and, and Giannis is getting old, yeah. Yeah. so this is, this is the next young, mm -hmm. this is the youth movement right here. Yeah, so, and by the way, real, real quick, um, we're going to have coverage starting on mm -hmm. the morning show. Mm -hmm. We'll have coverage on the 9, the noon, and of course, we're going to be down there getting ready for the, yeah, uh, getting yeah. ready for the big tip-off. Should be a Mavericks great day, action-packed day so. there. Um, tickets are still on sale. I actually got off the phone with some Spurs officials. They said that this game is not sold out. Uh oh what? Contrary to popular belief. Whoa. 
Okay. Tickets are still on sale, and they're actually having some di good discounts right now, well, so make sure to check that out. They got like out. two or three left? Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> two or three. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> all of us three. <laughs> all right. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. All right, got some tickets left. So. We're okay, but we're going to have, have all day long ready. coverage on, on Wednesday, so we're yeah. excited. We're pumped. Yes, Let's get we it going. Are. Wimby. Real Wimby stuff. Watch. Wimby Mania. Yes, Wimby Wednesday. Yes, yes Wimby we look Wednesday. forward to it. I like that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Time now, 942 and 76 degrees for now. You're watching GMSA at 9. And here are our friends, the Flamingos. Can we can we put the speaker on them? Hey guys, we're expecting rain today. Hope you guys are happy about that. They're out in the shade at the San Antonio Zoo. And of course, it's always a great day to go to the zoo. The decorative skulls you see everywhere during Day of the Dead are called calaveras, and the most popular calaveras originated with a political cartoonist and printmaker, José Guadalupe Posada. Born in 1852, Posada lived through some of Mexico's most turbulent times, and his first political cartoons were published when he was just a teenager. They were so successful, they forced a governor out of office, but Posada's new enemies forced him to flee town. In 1888, he moved to Mexico City, and in the following years, he helped publish tens of thousands of illustrated flyers, or volantes. These single-page tabloids were like our late-night talk shows. They were filled with biting political humor, and at a time when few could read, Posada's Calaveras became popular throughout Mexico. So popular, many believe he raised the country's political consciousness. And when the Mexican Revolution was just beginning, Posada published what would become his most famous image, La Catrina. At the time, many of Mexico's ruling class were obsessed with acting and looking European. To mock them, Posada put a fancy French hat on the Aztec's female god of death. His statement, rich or poor, we all die. Death is the great equalizer. As far as Posada, he died poor and mostly forgotten in 1913. But in the following decades, his influence on the great artists of Mexico became undeniable. Today, many consider Posada the father of modern Mexican art, and La Catrina has become the icon of Day of the Dead. I hope it won't be a lot of rain for that weekend. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. hopefully not. We'll see some small chances here and there, and that's going to be the case most of this week. Uh, just okay. some small opportunities. Nothing is going to be very heavy here in San Antonio, but we will take well, we can get. Sure. Let's get back to the radar and uh, show you where the rain is right now. West of San Antonio, we've got some showers working their way up through uh, Uvalde and Concan at this hour. Again, nothing here around San Antonio. I had a couple showers earlier in the Hill Country, but as I said, these don't last very long. They tend to go away, pop up and then go away. Uh, but getting kind of a broken line of showers here, Uvalde down to Crystal City and Carrizo Springs. And this will work its way towards San Antonio. So we could see a few more showers as the afternoon wears on. Now the heaviest of the rain is going to be up here, Junction Rock Springs to Del Rio, if we're going to see any of the heavier showers and storms today. So far we haven't seen a lot, but possibility is there uh, as uh, the day wears on. And here's what our forecast looks like. 30% chance, lots of clouds, especially this morning, 79 noontime, and then 30% chance into the afternoon. 85 is your high temperature today, so not a huge warm up, just because the cloud cover is not going to allow us uh, to get all that warm. Uh, that's okay. It was certainly hot over the weekend. 78 at 8 o'clock, 77 by 9 p.m. Some small rain chances still overnight. And here's how the computer models see it. So we'll fast forward to noontime. This doesn't show a whole lot, but it does show some breaks in the clouds. And then, as I mentioned, a lot of heavier rains to our north and west. 4 o'clock still shows some sprinkly showers around here. Can't rule out a thunderstorm either. Uh, so don't be surprised if you hear a rumble of thunder. It's just not likely. Uh, we're not going to see widespread thunderstorms. It's mostly going to be in the form of these light showers. And around 10 o'clock, doesn't show a whole lot here, but more showers and storms potentially developing out west, which we'll certainly keep an eye on. Uh, that, again, is where some of the heavier the rain, heaviest of the rain could fall in our viewing area. 75 right now and cloudy. Dew point is at 71. It's humid. East, southeast, we went to 10 miles per hour. And our rain chances this week, tomorrow, 30%, 40 percent chance Wednesday. Maybe our best day, area of low pressure moves in, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Probably enhances our rain chances a little bit. They fall off Thursday, then we build back a little bit on Friday, and then we keep it pretty consistent over the weekend with some 20% chances. Uh, rainfall, as I said, the heaviest of the stuff's going to be up here, Rock Springs Junction to Del Rio. That's where you could see up to two inches, especially as you get up towards San Angelo. For us and the rest of us, we're talking quarter of an inch to half an inch at best. 
and that's through Thursday. So we're talking several days here. It's just going to add up to a whole lot. Uh, it is also going to be windy. We need to point this out. Uh, winds could gust 25 or so next couple of days, uh, maybe coming down a little bit Thursday and Friday, but building back again on Saturday. In general, though, it's going to be a breezy to almost windy week. And the satellite picture shows, yes, we have a lot of cloud cover here around San Antonio, especially as you go west, and then you get some breaks down here to the south and east, and then you run into some of that rain out west. Bigger picture, and by the way, this is the remnants of Norma. We were talking about that for several days, that energy moving across Texas, and that's why we're getting some of this activity today. Now, long term, Norma moves away, or what's left of Norma moves away, and we get an area of low pressure that moves in from the west. This starts to kick off more showers and storms, so as we get into Wednesday, some storms out west, and then some of those storms will work their way towards us as we get into late Wednesday. This is where we could see a few storms, and we'll watch for that late Wednesday, Wednesday night, maybe early Thursday. Uh, and that's why we brought rain chances up to 40% on Wednesday. So 84 tomorrow, 86 Wednesday, 86 Thursday, 84 Friday. Rain chances every day. Again, nothing that uh, is terribly high as far as the rain chance goes, but it is there. Uh, and that's certainly better than nothing. But it's there every day. Uh, yeah, it is. Which, it know. is. And as I said, beyond this forecast, yeah. we could get a front around Halloween that can bring even more rain chances and some cooler weather. The cooler oh. weather would be good. Cooler for, weather? For our candy, like you brought up. I didn't even think about that. I was thinking yeah. about the costumes and being it's comfortable. Very important. You don't yeah. want anything melting. No. That almond don't. joy, you know, it's just not the same. It's not. When you got to <laughs> Very true. Peel it off. Put it back in the <laughs> put it back in the fridge for next time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're glad about that right we now are. in the cold front. Thank what you, What was Justice. yours? Kit Kat? Is that what yours? Kit Kat. Is that your favorite? It's the way to go. 100%. What's your favorite? Candy corn, of course. Mm. Halloween. Oh, chocolate. Nine fifty one. See, I don't want it melted. <laughs> 96 degrees. That's Candy right. corn's not going to melt. Speaking of Halloween, when we come back, a look uh, at the top five films and theaters this weekend, including a Disney Halloween classic. Mm -hmm. The 30th anniversary re-release of Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas debuted at number five. The animated classic brought in $4.1 million. Paw Patrol, the mighty movie, trotted back to fourth with $4.5 million, while The Exorcist Believer slipped from second to third with $5.6 million. I didn't realize this was a race. Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon bowed in second place on ticket sales of $23 million. Welcome to the acoustic setting. Swifties were back in theaters this weekend. Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour, held on to first place to the tune of $31 million, bringing the concert film's domestic box office total to $129.8 million. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And we even see her when we're watching football. Yeah, she was at the yeah. Chiefs yeah. game again yesterday. That's she pretty cool. She's everywhere. Travis oh. Kelsey. She's having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Who pays for the dinner, her or Kelsey? Take turns. I don't know. That's the way to do oh. that. Have a good day, guys. See you back here at noon.